Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to take a moment to thank our friend Lindsay very much for your donation to our channel's PayPal account. I really appreciate it, Lindsay. Thank you. This video is not going to apply to all victims of narcissistic abuse as it specifically targets victims that are co-parenting with the narcissist. I want to talk about co-parenting today. Leaving a narcissist is going to be a bloody nightmare at the best of times. Now, what do I mean by the best of times? You don't have uh, children with the narcissist. You don't have a lot of uh, community property, uh, real estate. You don't work together. So for some of us, we were able to cut the ties a little easier. But if you do have kids, you've got an extraordinary set of circumstances. For victims that have children with the narcissist, you are dealing with the same daily abuse that everyone else dealt with, the gaslighting, the projection, the infidelity, the lying, possibly physical or sexual abuse. You're living on eggshells, you're terrorized, but I do recognize that when children are involved and you love your children, you are very likely living in an extremely heightened level of terror, panic, anxiety, and stress. I have personally spoken to probably 50 very good, decent, respectable parents who through smear campaigns, lies, court manipulation, forged documents have lost custody of their children who were actually reduced to supervised visitation of their own children terrified because now the children are being raised by the narcissist and actively the children are being turned against them so before it ever gets to that point i've got some tips some ideas that may help you avoid that sort of outcome whether you're still with the narcissist, planning your departure, and well aware that you could have some issues ahead as far as court proceedings and child custody battles go, or you're free and still living under the fear of impending child custody battles. Either way, there are ways that we can lessen the risk factor and help you move more fluidly and really look forward to a brighter outcome. So everybody stay calm don't panic i know there's a lot of you really really living on the edge of terror right now because you have children with a narcissist now i do fully realize that an empath whether you're a man or a woman and whether your partner is a man or a woman you are not going to want to actively eliminate a parent from your child's life i get that i really do but the reality is they're not going to offer you the same courtesy so you need to start thinking mama or papa bear on this as far as protective measures go your highly protective nature is really going to have to kick in at this point and realize it really is a matter of you preserving your right to parent and you protecting your children to the best of your ability. Now, when I say wild bear, I don't mean go flailing. I mean get organized in a very, very strategic way. First and foremost, you have to recognize that you are a victim, plain and simple. You are not actively plotting against the narcissist. You are the one who has the least amount of control. Now, when someone, the narc, is strategically plotting against you, they really are holding the reins. They really are in a position to be manipulating you mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, so they definitely have the upper hand in this case and you need to flip this around now just knowing that they are actively plotting against you knowing that they're all following the same playbook and they are slaves to the agenda should give you a stronger sense of confidence and should give you a heightened feeling that you're going to be able to combat this effectively now keep in mind Part of the nar narcissist strategy is always going to be to make you feel nuts and to make you act nuts. When you're dealing with a child custody battle, acting nuts is the last thing you can afford to do. 
The narcissist is creating a stage and you are their puppet. You have to cut those puppet strings. You have to become non-reactive. You have to absolutely keep your shit together. I don't care if the narc comes home and tells you they were just out with their mistress. You need to keep your shit together. Expect the worst so you are not caught off guard. This is a time when the narcissist is going to be pushing and pulling and prodding and driving you to act nuts so they can get this on video recording or audio recording or so they can get witnesses to your bizarre behavior. Now, every one of us has acted crazy in the presence of a narcissist. When someone's constantly gaslighting, constantly pushing your buttons, constantly pushing you to your emotional limits, yes, we all act nuts, which isn't so bad if you don't have kids. But if there's an ensuing child custody battle, you simply cannot afford to act crazy. And I know when they send some horrendous text message and it's got you all upset, the first instinct is delete it because you just don't want to look at it. I hear you. I get it. I did the same thing until I realized how valuable those hurtful and rotten text messages are. Screen save them. Send them to an email address that the narcissist is unaware of. If you do not have a private email address, I strongly suggest you get one so you can then screen save the communication, forward it to the email address that they have no knowledge of, and then delete it off your phone. Because if they know you're saving it, they will start to be very careful about what you're saying. They will be much more openly rotten and creepy if they think that you're not keeping a record of this. So make sure you protect yourself that way. Narcs are notorious for creeping victims' phones, so if there is anything on your phone that implies that you are monitoring them or saving evidence against them, they're going to end up deleting it anyways or put a plan in action to create a rebuttal against the evidence you're collecting. So just get it sent off to somewhere where it's safe. Nanny cams. They're cheap. You can get them anywhere. They look like stuffed toys or dolls. You can get one for very inexpensive. Put it in your child's room and just leave it sit on the shelf. The narc doesn't need to know it's there, but at least you've got an ongoing recording of how the narcissist is communicating with the child. If the narc is actively saying bad things about you to the child or anything like that, this can be very, very valuable information, especially if you're children go to visit the narc and you're already away from them, make sure you send a nanny cam with them. Narcs are notorious for criminal activity. If you are aware that your narc has committed some type of crime, make sure you gather evidence of this and get it safely stored. Now, narcs hate boundaries, so if you do have existing child custody orders in place, make sure that they are very specific, not open-ended. For example, the narcissist can pick the kids up on Friday. Make sure that time-sensitive information is added to that because they will violate those conditions. Guaranteed, they hate boundaries. So every time they violate the boundary, for example, they've got to pick the kids up at five, but they prefer to show up at seven or eight. This will be in violation of the child custody order if you have time sensitive information on there and you can continue to breach them. Now, I know your soft heart is kicking in and you don't want to eliminate a parent from your child's life and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Trust me when I say they are not offering this same courtesy back to you. They do not love the child. They do not love their parents, not their child, not their dog, not you, nobody. So take that little soft spot in your heart and tuck that away for another time because it simply doesn't apply to the situation. The narc does not love the children. You're at war and your relationship with your own flesh and blood, with your own children that you love dearly is in jeopardy and you must become proactive and highly defensive. And you have to conceal this. You cannot wear your emotions on your sleeve. If you've been isolated and you have lost a lot of your support network, you need to reestablish support. This is a two-part video. I'm just going to skip off to part two. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great NARC-free day.